from Exiles to my uh, third character of the league. When I saw the Combs heart being changed from 500 life to 1000, I thought that maybe life stacking would be fun, so that was my plan. What skills can be used with uh, life stacking? Well, what have you got for me? of course have the uh, melee ones with what's called blood first support, which adds two percent on level one of your maximum life as physical uh, damage to your weapons. You could use the sacrifice support, which is sacrifice sacrifices some of your life. Uh, sacrifice some of your life to uh, then deal more chaos damage. And then there's a third way. You can use the Relic of the Pact, which grants a level 1 Blood Sacrament skill. And I'm just going to show how it works. So if I were to remove all of these, you'll see if I hold a right click, I will start reserving my life. And the more life I reserve, the bigger the AoE, and the more damage it does. But, as you see, it takes quite some time for it to charge all the way up. Because we want the AoE to be big, we want it to be quick, and we don't want to reserve all of our life either. So, if we add some support gems, like Second Wind, which has a 200% uh, multiplier, Life Tap, which has a 300, and... Then it's up to you what you want. You can run a Brutality for 140%, but then you can't deal any elemental damage. Uh, we'll get to that soon, why I'm running Critical Damage Support instead. So if I start shining now, you see, oh, it's going faster. But it's still not good enough. Essence Worm. Brent is, uh, so we can reserve an aura for free, well, any skill for free. But we also have 80% reduced reservation efficiency. If I put this on, this goes in one tick. So I reserve about 70% of life. And since it can't channel into a second, uh, what do you call it? A second stage, because you can't reserve more than 100% of your life, then it goes off instantly. So if I use spam right click, this goes faster. So, all we do is grab as much life as possible. To do this, we just get uh, gear with strength and life, as much as you can get, uh, on all pieces of gear. You use the untouched soul uh, with uh, life catalysts to get up to 48 maximum life instead of 40 per empty red sockets. This is why all of this is empty. We don't need anything else. And just as a mobility, I'm using a frost blink linked to life tap. The reason why I have it linked and not empty for even more life is give me, <laughs> as you might see, like 400 life if I had this empty, is because life tap on that one doesn't trigger. We don't cast the spell, we reserve it. So, since it doesn't have a cast, it can't trigger. This is why we then use it with a frost blink instead. To get 6 seconds of lifetime. To get, well, 20% more damage. Um, this belt is expensive. Um... Uh, just look at these mods themselves, this should be around 30 divines. But you could just buy a normal belt with a open prefix. Uh, with as much resistance as you could get at the highest tier life. And then just RNG slam uh, with a hunter's exalted orb. Every try is like three divines. But it's like one in three that you hit the life. Might be tier two if you're lucky it will be tier one and that, that would be great but i only roll tier two and i'm happy with it anyways there is another defensive mechanic i'm using here because i'm reserving so much of my life 
anything, well, you know, if I'm reserving, it's not like 45,000 life, I'm recharging my life like I told the Madman. And it's recharging like Energy Shield does, because I'm using Eternal Youth. Energy Shield Recharge instead applies to your life. Energy Shield normally works if you don't get hit for X amount of seconds, or if you don't take any damage, more likely, uh, then your life will just recharge really fast. If we use Dissolution of the Flesh, it removes all the energy shield, but life would be life that would be lost by taking damage is instead reserved, which means we don't take damage. We reserve it. Since we don't take damage, the Eternal Youth Energy Shield Life Recharge, that is, uh, is always applied. Which means I have this crazy region, even if I get hit by something. I'm just gonna uh, run out to demonstrate it, so let's go here. So even if I get hit, it's not also reserving from my full life, not from half. So I still use all of my life bar. As you might see, I get hit a bit more. What out. See, it's still recharging. But the weaknesses this build has is that if you would get hit enough times, so I'm just gonna let these boys slap me a little bit. I won't be able to use my skill anymore after reserve, after I get past with this 32% of my life. There we go. I can no longer use my skill. Which means I need to get out of combat for about two seconds and it's gone. And then just go have again. Uh, another weakness is, uh, well, damage over time in general. Damage over time. Well, if you get ignited, you take damage, which means you reserve life. If you use uh, Blood Rage, as an example, you take physical damage. Thus, you would start reserving your life. If you stand on burning ground, you reserve life. If you uh, get poisoned or bleeding, it starts reserving your life really quickly. We don't want that. I've seen a few builds that totally ignore this mechanic and just go, haha, more life, more damage, fun. I wanted this build to kind of work in the normal mapping scenario. You will die from, from time to time, but it's not that often. I'm currently level 95 and I died four or four times. It's, it's okay. It's softball. I don't care. I will never play hardball. So. To prevent most of the issues this build has is we take both of these to have a 60% chance to avoid poison and bleeding and we slap on a um, Vistule with at least 40% chance to avoid poison and bleeding and some life. This way we're 100% uh, immune to poison and bleeding. So that's two of the ailments fixed. Pantheon, 60% less duration of Ignite on you, so a normal Ignite normally lasts around, what is it, 4 seconds? 60% less of that, so it's less than 2 seconds. It's not a big deal, I haven't died of Ignite yet, so that's fine. You don't need any avoid uh, Ignites at this point. And this Pantheon also makes us unaffected by Burning Ground, which also uh, solves one of the dot issues that this build has. So, the only dot left would be lightning damage over time from... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Barang the Crusader, the mana leech, anti shield leech ones, uh, rare enemies, and the poison ground. If you have some cave resistance, like I'm capped at 75, that chaos dot won't really do anything. So
so you can most of mostly ignore it but every now and then you need to get out of the poison field and wait two seconds for your light to recharge Another thing is, well, if you get hit, you start preserving life. So you, you don't want to get hit. So either you need to teleport up with cross blink and right click to detonate and kill the pack before they hit you. Or you need some kind of evasion to, well, not get hit. And luckily, this lead did change to Gladiator. So now we get 50% chance to block attacks straight up we use a uh, what's it called uh wrath pit a globe shield to get more crit chance spell damage based on my life which means we're almost spell crit capped as well hence why critical damage support is pretty good and it also has up to 50 percent chance of block spell damage this means we have about 50% chance to block attack damage, 50% chance to block spell damage. We are constantly moving because this cast is pretty fast. So we can dodge most of the enemy hits. Every now and then you will get hit and sometimes they hit you when you're reserving your life. It's like a half a second cast time and you die. That, that's what has caused my death so far. I just jump into a pack and get hit and then I die. By a big hit that is. So you also want some kind of life left uh, when reserving. You don't want to reserve all of it. This way we can uh, take one of two hits in the pack. This build has some ridiculous damage. So you will see, well, you will see in the uh, intro that I just instantly wiped Katarina. And this was without buffed gear. I had like maybe 25,000 life when I was doing it and it's more than enough. Uh, I was initially planning on getting over 28,000 which will be possible if I didn't find my uh, first ever headhunter. <laughs> yes, I found a headhunter first time. Which means when I swapped to headhunter I needed to get some more resistances hence why I have the resistances here. So I removed this life wheel here because it was, well, uh, so that little life was a free, free, free seven. So that's sixteen percent increased life. Put it into resistances instead. And what else did I put it? Oh yeah, down here. Just for our jewel to get seven percent more life and some more resistances. You don't need headhunter. You, just, you can run with this belt. It's more than just fine. Hunter is more fun though. And you have a chance that you find a healthy monster which then grants you 40% increased life. So depending on the mods on the monsters, this headhunter can be good. And since your damage is base physical, you can always get uh physics extra lightning, cold, fire, etc. Uh, as uh, rare modifiers. So headhunter, solid. If you find one, it's not mandatory at all. And Speak, uh, if I go back to Gladiator, because I keep on rambling about stuff. We also get this deal more damage with hits on ailments against rare unique enemies every two seconds to bring up your presence up to a maximum 50%, which means after 100 seconds, we deal 50% more damage to them. That's fine. Uh, Saboteur uh, AoE has a chance to deal 50% more area damage. It's good. It's fun when it, when it procs, and we also get some more AoE, which is good. And also Pain Attunement. Since we're using Petrified Blood, we always have this up. I mean, if you would spam this, you could always run a uh, Pride Aura instead, if you want more damage. But this build already shits out so much damage, so i rather have uh, less damage taken. Since some retries is so uh, heavy, this is just less damage taken, straight up. And always keeps it at uh, low life. So if I would remove this, I no longer have low life. But when I cast it, it will take the anyways. So, big region that will never disappear. 
you uh, start reserving your life when you get hit or take damage over time. Damage is based on your maximum life, based on how much you're reserving. You don't want for, to reserve everything because you want some kind of, uh, well, life to take a few hits. We can use the replica Witchfire Brew to give a free vulnerability curse. Uh, overflowing Chalice to just maintain the flasks easy, more easily. Uh, room is concoction, more block, less damage taken, good. Uh, diamond flask, because we, we need more crit chance, and just a quicksilver flask, just to get a little bit more movement speed. Our flasks aren't optimized at all, they aren't quality, there's nothing special about it, just flasks. Uh, rest of my gear, just to show it, life, strength, resistances. Life, strength, resistances, life, resistances, life, resistances, movement speed, uh, life, resistances, uh, record pact, craft pith, and a calm's heart, which is just all life, anyways. Uh, that's the build. It's been really fun. Uh, I'm really enjoying this build. It's a lot of damage. But. I wouldn't recommend this in closed arenas such as Ultimatum. I haven't tried T17s yet because I want to get another level before I do this because leveling takes quite some time now. But I think this should be able to do uh, T17s pretty easy. Everything should just pop. Oh yeah, another thing. I forgot about this. As I said earlier, physical as extra damage. In this case, physical as, uh, physical as extra cold on your boots will solve your porcupine issues. Due to our base damage of physical is so high, then we get a little bit of cold. And since we're always, nearly always crit, we will just shatter them, uh, the porcupines, when they die and they won't explode. This solves that enemy issue, because since you're always close combat, you'll get hit by it quite a lot. So, cold damage good. You can always get flat cold damage to spells on a uh, jewel, well, abyss jewel as well, if you don't want to run this. But then again, you need a cold damage to shatter, so then you can't run brutality, just saying. Hope you have a good league. I had quite, some, quite fun with this. And I've seen people push 30,000 life, but that's using the... Uh, Uber, is it Uber Shaper that drops it, or is it Uber Cortex, the one that changes uh, energy shield to life? That means if you get maximum ES plus life on some gear, you can get another maybe 300 life here, another 300 life here, 300 life here from the energy shield instead. So that will definitely maybe push it higher up, but this has plus thousand life and easily corrupted to six percent maximum life if you want to take this chest further you could always uh, buy a rag glorious plate with uh, the enchant from heist which grants you i think it's like eight percent or maybe more uh life efficiency so that will put this chest to 1080 life and then you could maybe corrupt it for another six percent life that will give you eight more small numbers but it's always something i mean 80 life what would that give me uh like 400 life 500 ish 500x life uh yeah that's it thanks for watching